What's up? I'm trying to fix my camera. How are you guys? How are you guys? What's today? Good day? Hey. What's today? Good day? What's up? What's up? What's up? Get all my stuff together. What's up? What's up? What's up? How was your day? How was your day? Hey, Dr. Debibu. How are you, Tesere? Hey, hey, I see you guys. Put how your day was in there. What happened today? How did God show up in your day? <laughs> okay, we're on straight shenanigans today. I'm tired. And I didn't get to work out today, so we got to get a workout in during the scope. <laughs> yes, yes, good, good. I had to, I actually had to do a training today, so yeah, yeah. But I'm glad you were productive. Yes. Yes, yes. Come on, guys. Put your... I hate to say it, but it was rough. Yes, day two of your fast would be rough. I hear you, baby. <laughs> Woo, day two of the fast. Woo, because your body is not in ketosis yet. Did you know that you really don't start truly fasting until day three? Hello from Connecticut. Or should I say hello to Connecticut from Georgia? It went good. It went good. Yeah, your body doesn't go into ketosis, y'all, until day three. Hey, Misha. Yes, until day three of your fast. Until, uh, until you're fasting. So what's, what's happening is your body is digesting what's already in there. It takes a long time for all of everything to digest. So, But, you know, when you're doing fast. Hey, Dana. How are you, prophetess? Um... And so you, that's why you feel so bad because, you know, your body, it has, it reserves. And so those energy reserves, those pockets are, are getting depleted. And so your body's mad. Your brain is mad. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. But this is going to be a really, this is going to be a really deep one. Hello. 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 So that's why I said rough, good, rough day, but believe in God. What's going on, Prophetess Dana? Let's go ahead and get that out the way. Yes, guys, I'm in rare form. <laughs> I know what's going on. <laughs> um, what's going on? Let's let's go ahead and deal with that. I know, y'all. Pray pray for your girl. What's going on? If you care to share, I don't, you know, or or speak in or speak in cryptic language. And that and while she's um pray for your girl right and while she's um typing in i need you guys to get everything for um for us because we're getting ready to go there we're getting ready to i did most of the work for you again but i need you to take notes this is this is going to bless you this is going to bless you this is going to revolution can you guys hear me is everything good can you guys see everything's awesome everything is awesome okay 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 all good good okay okay Trying to stay positive in the midst of things going on, um, marriage issues. Okay, okay, all right. Um, you're in the you're in the fight, and you know here's the thing. Yes, um, fighting when we're in a battle, it doesn't necessarily feel good. You know what I mean? It doesn't. You know, his when Moses's arms were raised, his arms got tired. So that means that they begin to ache and they were hurting and stuff like that. And, you know, the people came and they held his arms up. And while his arms were up, they were winning the battle. It, it's battling is battling is battling is battling. You know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's be 100 about that. Battling is battling is battling. But as long as your head is in the game, that's going to give strength to you. As long as you hold on to the precious promises of God, that's going to give strength to you. And so even tonight, even while you're on this scope, I believe, I decide and I say, for you that by the time we say the last amen on this scope something in you is going to have changed the warrior in you is going to have arisen it's going something in your prayer life is going to shift and it's going to it's going to root you and I, i'm praying over you we are praying over you that you even though there's a hurricane there's the eye of the hurricane that the holy spirit would keep you hello hello we see you that the holy spirit yes that the holy spirit's going to keep you in the eye of that thing and though things may be twirling and swirling around you that it's not even going to affect you it's not even going to infect you. 
We are praying your strength through this thing. You are going to see the mighty hand of God. You are going to see the mighty hand of God. But while in the meantime, in between time where things are working out in the process, you're in the process, right? Yes, you're in the process. The process is where the juice is. The process is where you help other people. The process is, is where all the gold is gleaned. The process is where the silver is refined. Yes, so we're, we, are, we are here. We are your community. We are praying for you. We are loving on you. But I'm believing by the time we get off of this scope tonight, you are going to see a mighty change in you. You're going to see, it's just going to feel different in Jesus' name. That there's, He's releasing a power and a fire over you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what did you guys do yesterday after we got off the, the um, scope? Yeah, I can tell after last night. How can you tell? Lifting up others but getting weary. No, you're not. No, you're not. But it's okay. I want you to keep typing what you're saying. And when I say no, you're not, I'm not, I'm not like, no, you're not, girl. Shut up. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm declaring to your spirit. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay? No, you're not. So that, that's why I want you. So when you hear me say that, don't be like... <laughs> Go back and watch last night because this is a continuation from last night. And so this is going to spark, um, this is going to be study on what was, okay, I just want to preface that because you're going to be like, why is she mean, mean to me? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm doing warfare on your behalf while we're, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm pulling you into agreement with me. I'm, I'm superseding what you're feeling and I'm enforcing the rule of God in Jesus name. Yes, yes. So tonight's scope is going to be as should have kind of came before yesterday's scope, but you know, when we were talking about filters yesterday, one of my filters, even when it comes to the prophetic guys, I have, I have prophetic filters. One of my filters is, is I need to be able to see the principle in the word of God. I'm a principles driven chick. And so even in business and especially in the spirit, I'm looking for the principle in the scripture. I'm looking for the principles in the scripture. And so uh, last night, God released some things on the scope. And there was some things I had never heard before. You know, I, we prophesy in a river. We prophesy in the same vein. And so sometimes you will hear some people always prophesying or always preaching. The preach word is the prophetic word. Okay. So you may hear people, you know, they're a faith preacher. They're a, they're a prosperity preacher. No, that's the river. That's their river. And so God has given them great insight. God has given them some great revelation. And so that's, that's the river. And so when you step in that river, that's what you're going to glean. That's what you're going to get. So um, that's why when you prophesy, and this is just a side note. This is just a side note. Um, take notes on this. When you prophesy, it may always feel like you're always prophesying about health. You're always prophesying about healing. You're always prophesying about the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Like, gosh, Lord, does everybody have stomach issues? <laughs> gosh, Lord, does everybody have diabetes? Or am I seeing, is this in myself? No, no, no. That's your river. And so once you know your river, you, you just double down in that thing and God, it's like lanes in the prophetic. It's like every, we, we join hands and we become, right, we become the whole piece. We become the whole piece. And so you, you may be able to preach a subject well, prophesy through a thing, pray a certain thing really, really well. And it's not just because you're stuck on it or it's something, let me help you here. You may feel, see how I go on rabbit trails? See, praise God. You may feel that, um, you prophesy what's going on in your situation. And like you, you prophesy from out of some things that are going on in your realm. Or you pray from some things that are going on in your realm. And that can kind of mess with you a little bit if you do not understand that you are in the people, you're in the midst of the people so that you can pray and prophesy in detail. It's, it's a training me uh, mechanism. It's a training that God uses. And so that's why intercessor, your, your throat hurts, but there's nothing wrong with you. you. It's not your throat hurting. God is letting you touch that thing. God is letting you feel that thing so you can pray it more thoroughly. And so you can prophesy into it more thoroughly. And so that's why it may be like things have come upon you, like things was popping up or you in a season of like pop up shenanigans and you've never dealt with this and you know it's not your thing and you're walking around in a state of confusion, right? 
Yes, you're walking around in a state of confusion, like, why am I dealing with this? I've never dealt with this before. What is the meaning of this? What is the purpose of this? And if you would just double down in prayer and begin to pray, not for yourself, but for the people who are experiencing the sink, you're going to see breakthrough. You are their key to breakthrough. Once it's breaking off of you, it's going to be broken off of them. I know. My blood. Yes, and so don't take it personally. Do not take it personally when you um, have things come upon you, when you're feeling some kind of way. Don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Take it to the throne. Begin to prophesy. Yes, there is. The, I'm telling you, there is there is breakthrough tonight. So you know, I, I'm 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 ready. Y'all ready? Let's let's do this. Um, I'm trying to make send a text message. Okay, so we're gonna be in Joshua chapter one. If you want to share it, share it. If you don't, you don't. Y'all know I'm not into numbers. I don't care. I believe what God has for us is for us, and prayerfully, people are somewhere doing something they're supposed to be doing. Not just like you guys. <laughs> Because, hey, I'll be on by myself, looking at myself saying, girl, this is what God says to you. <laughs> All right. So you guys let me know. I know. Y'all let me know when y'all are, um, I know, when y'all are ready. Put it in there when y'all are ready. Because I really need you guys to be ready. Yes, I need you to watch last night. I need you to watch last night. If you, and, and honestly, um, if you know people when, um, okay, if you know people who could benefit from last night, if you know people who are, deal who are dealing with um, some of those things, I need you to share it with them. I need you to share it with them. But this is going to help you tonight. This is going to help you tonight. All right, go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Let me know when you're there. Turn to your neighbor and say amen. No, no, mm -mm. no, because this, this, this one should have came first, but God is God is God and he does it how he wants to do. So it's, there's no particular order, but I like to do teaching and then releasing, but God can do it however he wants to do. Okay. All right. Good. Let me change this music. Jesus, let me get on my repeat. <laughs> I am so funny. All right. You guys got everything you got to write with. All right, good, 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 good. Joshua chapter one. We are all familiar with the story of Joshua and we have read Joshua probably a million, cabillion, quadrillion, gazillion times. But we're gonna read this through. Um, <laughs> we're gonna read this through the lens of the intercessor with our eyes open, with our eyes open. And I need you guys to see yourselves. I need you to see the people that you're praying for. This is... This is so serious. This is going to revolutionize some things and how you see um, blessing, how you see promise. It's going to revolutionize it. Okay. So we're there. Joshua chapter one. All right. So I'm going to deal with a, a, a few components and it's, and, and we're going to, we're going to begin at the beginning and then we're going to work our way through. And then you go back to what you wrote down yesterday. If you wrote down any of the pro the prophetic yesterday, the things that the Lord released and understand how these two are paired together. And you're going to see what God has released yesterday and what God has released over you in the past. You're going to see it in a different light. It's going to be very heavy. Okay. So Joshua chapter one, now after the death of Moses, the servant, uh, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, Moses' servant, that word minister means servant, saying, okay, first thing I'm going to deal with, and this is just a side note, uh, it's not the main piece to tonight, okay? Now after the death of Moses, another word for death is transition. Another word for death is transition. Now after the transition of, of Moses, we see um, Joshua arising. This is the time of Joshua arising. This is the time of Joshua arising. I'm speaking this into your spirit. This is the time of Joshua arising. Okay, before we even get into the word, let's fix ourselves. We're in prayer time. Let's fix ourselves. We believe the word of the Lord is true. We believe the word of the Lord is for us. We believe that God is speaking through his scripture. We believe that he is releasing over us secrets. He is popping the, the locks on the scrolls. And we're going into the deeper places in God. That the chamber door is open. We believe. Spirit of the living God, here we are. 
Okay. So, um, Joshua, Moses is dead. The dispensation of out, coming out, the dispensation of coming out is out. I need you to write that down. The dispensation, the era, the time of coming out is out. It is over. Coming out is out. I need you to grab this. The dispensation, the seasons, the days, the cycle of coming out is out. Moses is dead. The season of coming out has transitioned. I need you to grab this. And the era of going in is in. The transition for coming in is in. I'm releasing a prophetic word. It's in the scripture. Moses represents the dispensation of coming out. Joshua represents the, di the dispensation of going in. Moses is dead. Moses has transitioned. So I'm, I'm speaking and I'm declaring over you before we even, this ain't even the word study, but I need you to understand. I'm speaking and I'm declaring over you the seasons of you coming out, the seasons of you getting out of a thing, the seasons of you um, breaking out, breaking out. Come on, coming out is over. It's over. It's over. I need you to write that down. Me coming out is over. Me coming out and what was on me in the come out is over. What needed to come out of me, what needed to happen, what needed to be pressed out of me is over, is over. The season of coming out is out and now you're standing in the place. You are in the era. Your two feet are planted solidly on the ground and the trend of heaven if heaven had trends, the trend of heaven is now it is time to go in. It is time to go in the season of Joshua. Joshua is arising, coming into the promise, coming into the command, coming in is in. It is in. This is what God is doing. God is not bringing people out in this season. God is bringing them in. This is the season of Joshua. This is the season of bringing in, in your prayer life as praying, as a praying Joshua. I need you to hear me. As a praying Joshua, you are bringing people in. The season of being a praising, a praying Moses is out. Your prayers are not to bring people out, to break people out. Your prayers now are to bring people in. You are ushering people into what thus saith the Lord. You are ushering people into the oracles of God. You're not no longer bringing them out of the place of Egypt, bringing them out of the systems of Egypt. Out is out and in is in. And so I'm speaking to the Joshua on the inside of you. Joshua, arise. Your prayer life is turning. How you decree is turning. The war is in your mouth is turning. Moses was on the defense. Moses was on the defense. Joshua is on the offense. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how in a second through the scripture, okay? All right. Now we're going to skip down to verse 5. Let's go down to verse 5. Y'all there? Okay. Now remember the other day when I was telling you guys about the different types of the will of God, the different types of the wills of God. There are different types. It's just not the sovereign will and it's just not the, um, right, right. So I, if you have those notes by you, I need you to pull them out. It's not just the sovereign will of God and it's not just the permissible will of God. There are different other wills of God. So let's, let's look at verse five. God is talking to Joshua. There shall not, there shall not any man be able to freaking phone. There shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Okay? So the, the season of Moses has transitioned, yet Joshua, Joshua is under the umbrella of Moses' covenant. God comes to Joshua speaking the covenant that he has with, with Moses, but now he's adding Joshua to that covenant, okay? So when we're looking at the will of God, we see the sovereign will of God, we see the perceptual will of God, we see the good pleasure will of God. 
Does that make sense? And as we go further into the scripture, if you read, I want you to read the whole scripture you guys have already. When you read the whole scripture, you will see the permissible will of God. There's some contingencies. There's some things that'll happen if they don't do what God is telling them to do, then everything is going to be kind of messed up. So you see how that, you see when you're reading the scripture, you can see the different components to the wills of God. Side note, pray into that thing. Pray into that particular will. You can pray into this. You can pray into the sovereign will of God, right? You can remind God of his covenant. You can remind God of his covenant of what you guys just came out of and the umbrella that you're under or that person is under or that entity is ever under. If you're praying for your state, the United States is under a particular covenant. Begin to provoke the heart of God, provoke the spirit of God because he is God of the covenant. He is God of the covenant. He, in Old Testament times, you can't break. you. How you deal with covenant is no matter what the other party does, I'm going to stay true to what I said. And so if God said it, he's going to stay true to what he said, no matter what people are doing. Come here, Moses and Aaron. They're, the sons of Korah are coming for uh, Moses and Aaron. And God says, get out of the way. I'm going to kill them all. And they throw themselves on the ground and they don't pray for the people. And they don't even really pray, have mercy, God, on the people. They don't know what they're doing. They pray, God, remember your covenant. You said these were your people. You said that um, you, you called them out. You said that you were going to give them the land. You can't do this because you made a covenant with your people. You made a covenant and called this particular people out. So now you're praying into the sovereign will of God. Does that make sense? Good, 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 good. Okay, so now we're going to skip down to verse six. And this is where you're going to start taking notes. All right, you ready? Be strong, be strong. Y'all see that? And have a good courage. The word strong, ready? The word strong in Hebrew is kazak, kazak. And it means, I, I pulled out some words because I know you guys were like, she gives us like every single word that's like ridiculous. <laughs> Obstinate, harden, resolute. Firm and stout. I'm going to say it again. Obstinate. Harden. Resolute. Firm and stout. So let's go back to the scripture. B, are y'all following me? Did you guys write some of those words down? The words that stick out to you, those are the words that you write down, intercessor, okay? So now we're going to replace strong. I'm going to put the def we're going to put the define those words that we draw it out, draw it out into that blank, okay? Be obstinate. This is God talking. Be obstinate. What does obstinate mean? Somebody type it in. What does obstinate mean? Now, so this is where I would go and I would begin to look up synonyms for obstinate and I would even begin to draw out even more words, right? Stubborn unchangeable, like a wall, right? Yes, like a wall. So be obstinate, be stubborn, be hardened, be hardened, come on, be resolute, be firm, be stout, and good courage, unyielding, very good, and, and good courage. The word courage is amats, amats, okay? I'm about to give you some of the words for amats. Strong, alert, proven superior, persistent, determined. Go through those again. Strong, alert, proven superior, persistent and determined. Okay. So now we're going to go back and read it. Okay. God is speaking. Be obstinate, be hardened, be resolute, be firm, be stout and of a alert, be alert, be proven superior, be persistent and be determined. Yes. For unto thee the people shall divide for an inheritance the land which I swear. 
Swear. Y'all ready for swear? It's the word Shaba. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. I am so immature. Shaba. <laughs> okay. Serious, we're adulting. It's the word Shaba. You're like, oh, I say that when I when I speak in tongues. Shaba. Uko Shaba. Yeah, you may be saying it in tongues. Y'all ready? <laughs> Shaba, yeah, see, you with me, boo. Shaba means to swear. It means a lot of things, but this is what I, I pulled out of it. To swear, Shaba, to swear by Jehovah himself, himself. For Jehovah to swear by himself. Let's run to Hebrews. He couldn't find no greater entity whereby he could swear. So he made an oath unto himself. That's what Shaba means. When God makes an oath with himself, concerning something that's a whole nother level that's that's a glory covenant i mean i don't even know what to even call that honestly i've never even heard that preached before the oath that god makes with himself when he's like i can't even find anything or anybody i even want to pull into this thing i say you ready for this i swear by myself because i'm the greatest entity that this this and this is gonna happen I mean, I call that a, a, a Shekinah covenant where God finds no greater power, nothing whereby which he can swear or he can put himself in agreement with other than his own self. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. So he's saying, be strong. All of those words. Take heart. Be of a good courage. You're going to divide for yourselves the inheritance whereby which... <laughs> Whereby which God swore unto himself, to himself, about what he's getting ready to give you. About this promised land. Woo! About the promise. Now y'all see where I'm going. Now y'all, so now we're talking about the, some things that God has spoken over your life. This is bigger than just the, the covenant with your grandmama. This is bigger, bigger than just the covenant of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There are some things over your life that God says, I made an oath with myself. Ugh. Because I can find no greater entity. I'm going to leave that alone for now. All right, y'all ready? Now we're going to verse 11, and this is where we want to land. This is where we want to land. Pass through the host, um, Joshua, after Joshua commands, God commands Joshua, now Joshua commands his officers, that's verse 10, so he's, now Joshua is speaking to the people, pass through the host, go through the camp, and command the people, prepare you victuals, get your food, get your provision ready, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go into possess the land which the Lord God giveth you to possess. Let's look at this word possess. Y'all ready? Y'all rash or y'all rash. Y'all rash. Y'all ready? This word means to drive out <clears throat> the previous tenants. This word means to seize, to rob, to expel, to impoverish, to bring to ruin, to cast out, to consume, to destroy, to disinherit, to expel without fail, mm. Mm. to succeed, to take possession of, to occupy. I'm going to read those again. You ready? To occupy by driving out the previous tenants. To seize, to rob, to expel, to impoverish, to ruin, to destroy, to dispossess. To leave, to make, to come to poverty, 
to seize and to utterly succeed. For within three days you shall pass over the Jordan and you're going to go in and you're going to invade the land which the Lord your God has given you to invade. I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the crossing over. We're crossing over and people are jumping up and down in church. We're crossing over and you got the shout music go. We're crossing over. Okay. We're crossing over and everybody's shouting, everybody's shouting, everybody's shouting, everybody's shouting. Oh yes, God has blessed me. I'm coming into the land. God has blessed me. I'm coming into the land. God has blessed me. I'm coming into the land. You're wrong. The children of Israel didn't cross over. They invaded. Do y'all understand this? When they came into the land, there was 2.5 million of them. There were people already in the land that don't know nothing about no Hebrew people, that don't know nothing about no promise. This is our land. We done got the wall of Jericho. We done got the Canaanites, the Hebuzites, the Jebusites, the Hittites. They all in the land, right? And here comes 2.5 million people invading the land. Invading the land. They have come out. They have come in to drive you out. This is violent. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, no. This is violent. Taking your promise is not a blessing in the sense that we think of a, a, a ushy cushy blessing. So going into your possession, which is your promise, going into your possession is a violent act whereby in you throw bows and take what's yours. You are trampling underfoot. You are seizing, you are possessing, you are taking, you are robbing. You are going in and you taking no prisoners. It ain't sweet, it ain't cute, it is a command. When God is, what God, then let's go back to yesterday. What God has told you to do, he, he's commanding you to take the possession. It is not a blessing. He didn't bless you to be a writer. He didn't bless you to do this. He's not blessing. No, he's commanding you to go in and take it. I know y'all never seen it like this before. He's commanding you to go in and possess what he's already given you. It's a command. It's not, it's not a suggestion. It is a command. It's not no, oh, I think you're so cute. I want to give you, I want to give you a home. No, it is go in and take, drive out the previous tenants, drive out the previous system, drive out that which doesn't belong, drive out the squatters. Your blessing over your life is a command, not a suggestion. The blessing over your life, the, 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 the promise over your life is a possession. God is telling you to go in and possess the land. And so now you've got to look at everything that God has told you to do. And now you've got to see it through the lens of this is what God is commanding me to do. So when I lift my hands and I'm receiving a prophetic word, it's not for you to feel good, baby. It's time for you to suit up because you're getting ready to go into that particular land and you're getting ready to plunder it. You're getting ready to take no prisoners. You're getting ready to take it, rob it, seize it, and drive out the previous inhabitants. It was drive out previous, the inhabitants. Who, who is ever there? What is ever there? When, when the children of Israel crossed over, right? When they invaded, let's... I need you guys to strike crossover. Strike it from your vocabulary because that's too sweet. We need to see it from the other perspective. Right? 2.5 million people just came in the land. Who are you? What do you want? 
There's no room for you. And they came in fighting. Take it out. Do not say crossover. Say invasion. God has called you to invade. God has called you to invade. You are an invading spirit. You are speaking spirit, right? You are an invading spirit. Remember I told you the season of coming out is out. And the season of going in is in. This is the season of invasion. This is a season to invade. This is a season where you go in and you wreak havoc in that industry and those things that God told you to put your hands to. <laughs> and I need you to stop seeing it as this is a blessing of God over your life. I need you to see those businesses. Don't think of those as a blessing over your life. It's not a blessing over your life. This is your life. And God has commanded you to take that land, to take that city. Is, that, is this making sense? Everywhere that the soles of your feet shall tread. This is in Joshua chapter 1. I'm giving it to you. It's part of the possession. It's part of the, come on. He swore by his own self concerning the possession. I need you just to let that sink in. He swore by his own self concerning the possession. He swore by his own self. Let that sit. Let that rest heavy on you. He swore by his own self concerning the possession with your name on it. The possession with your family's name on it. It's unshakable. It's unbreakable. And now you can, he's giving you access. He's telling you through this teaching how you are to approach it and how you're to pray into this. This is a violent thing. You invading, you coming in to your possession, you coming in to your blessing, you coming in to the standard of God over your life, you coming in to your health, you coming in to your wealth, you coming in in to your breakout you coming in is an invasion it's an invasion it's an invasion and so now everything that god is when god was talking about blogs yesterday when god was talking about social media yesterday whenever whatever what, what else was he talking about when god was talking about businesses on yesterday he's saying you've been you've been pussyfooting you've been approaching it like Oh, I get to come in because he's blessed me to come in and it's roses and sugar plum princesses. And God is saying, no, baby, it's an invasion. It's an invasion. And that's why when you walk in a room and you walk into places, it seems like the industry begins to turn on you because you're invading the space, baby. Let that sit with you for a minute. I don't know why they don't like me. I don't know why they're they're not receiving me. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yes, I, I, I don't know why, you know, I, I, I walk in and they're just not because you are an invading spirit. You are invading. You are an invader. I keep speaking that. I keep saying that because I need you to see yourself. It's not this cute. Yes, you may be cute on the outside and your hair may be laid and you may be, you know, cute. I don't even know any other word. You, when you walk in, you're, you are invading it. They were inhabitants here. And now you, when you walk in, you are, but freaking nanas, yes, you are serving an eviction notice. Just your presence there is serving an eviction notice. When you walk in, you walk with the presence and the heaviness of 2.5 million people. Let that sink in. When you walk into your promise, when you, when you come into that strong and that courageous heart, yes, and you put that on and you understand that God called me to this, that God released me, that over me, come on, my word shall not return back unto me void, but it shall prosper and accomplish that which he sent me to. So over you, God, over you, ugh, over you, come on, over you is God's right hand and God's left hand making an oath. Let that sink in. Did y'all catch that? 
over you, over his word. Prophet Misha, you are his word over you, over you. The God's right hand, God's left hand, making an oath. He couldn't find nothing in the earth whereby which he could swear by greater than his right hand and his left hand coming into agreement over his word, which is your name. Ugh. And so now you got to look at everything that God is telling you to put your hands to. There is an oath over you that, in, that involves Jehovah and Jehovah. And that's it. So now the weight, the weight of glory on your life, the weight of glory on the promises, the weight of glory on your gifting, the weight of glory, it ain't cute no more, is it? His right hand and his left hand over your body. His right hand and his left hand. Over you writing, over you doing, over you being, over you becoming, because you are an invader. Go in and possess the land that I swore unto your fathers. Woo! Jesus. <laughs> Am I yelling at y'all? I don't mean to yell. Is this making sense? We need to come out of this pity pat blessing stuff. Do we need to come? Oh, God is, he's, he's, he's giving me these ideas and, and they're so cute and they're so wonderful and they're so whimsical and I write them down in my journal because, oh, I feel he loves me. Oh, I told you I can't sing. Oh, how he loves me. And God is saying you missed it. And you wonder why the warfare is so great in your life. And you wonder why every time you get to a certain place, you get the boom bust cycle over your life. You wonder why you can't, you start something and you can't finish it. Just because you don't buy into it. Just because you don't decide to be strong and have a good courage. You, you walk in, you have the weight of 2.5 million people with you. It's you're stepping with the sound of 2.5 million people invading the space. So you on blast, you on blast, you can't walk in and hide because the weight of your steps, the weight of your steps, the weight of you walking, the weight of your writing, the weight of your education, the weight of your business, the weight of your ministry, 2.5 million people. You can't, it's like, it's, I mean, you a boom and the earth is shaking, boom. You shake it, boom. You ain't even in the building yet. Boom, and the windows are shaking. Boom, and the ceiling is shaking. Boom, boom. And so now everybody's like, who is this? What is this that is come? Did y'all get, yeah. What is this that is come? Boom. And you were like, oh me, I'm just nothing. I'm just a little bitty grasshopper. Oh, you talking about me? No, I'll just sit in the back. No, I'll just wait my turn. And you boom, 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 boom. And over you is God's right hand and his left hand. And he's saying, I'm telling you in three days, go in and possess the land. Notice how he said three days. 2.5 million people are crossing the Jordan in three days. Three days, three days. Over you is a command. You have to understand, you doing, you going, you being, you becoming is a command. It is not a suggestion. This is not where God, ha you have a suggestion box and God is writing his suggestions and putting them in the suggestion box. Gone is that day. Everything that God speaks to you is a command. Every word out of his mouth is a command. Everything. Why? Because you are a word release. You cannot return back unto him void. You must accomplish. You must. You must accomplish. My word shall not return back to me void, says God. But it shall accomplish and prosper that which I sent it to. Boom. 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 Is it the same as being summoned? Yes and no. 
You were, you were summons, baby, when you were put in your mama's belly. We talked about this a couple of scopes ago. I believe, and this is just an anesthetism, you know, whatever. I have a, an active imagination, whatever. Do y'all be like, she was on there. There was witchcraft. I don't know what's going on in the knees. Whatever. Jeremiah 1, God says that I, I knew you before I formed you. We know that there's a difference between creation and formed, right? He created Adam and then he formed Adam. It's two separate things. You, before we see you, he sees you. Before we see you, he's formed you. Before we see you, he has, he has acquainted. The Bible says that the word know means to be well acquainted. He was acquainted with your frame. He was, you, you and him were close. Y'all were besties. He began to, I, be, I believe that there were certain conversations that happened before we were released. I believe we said yes. The lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. He said yes before the earth, while the spirit of God was hovering over nothing. He had already said yes. He had already done it. He had already gone through it. And so we have to, we, we have to follow that model. You are here for a specific thing. You are here for a specific dispensation of time. You are here to accomplish a specific bidding of God. That's why you are here. Boom. Boom. And so that's why your life started in trauma. Boom. Boom. That's why when you were in your middle school years and your high school years, shenanigans. Boom. Boom. That's why you've had failed marriages. All of these things. Why? Because it's to keep you off track of how weighty, of how, of, of, of the, the impact of invasion. Heaven is invading earth. How? Through you. The spirit of God is invading earth. How? Through you. We always talking about open doors, open windows, open doors, open doors, close the doors, close the doors, close the doors. But now it's time for the enemy's camp. Come on, see this in the spirit. See the story of Joshua in the spirit. Oh my gosh. 2.5 million people just showed up. And the Bible says that after Jericho, the fame of Joshua went out through the land and the people, the other nations, the other inhabitants were scared. They were shaking in their boots. What were they doing? They were closing the doors. They were making sure there were no cracks open. The day has come. The day has come where the enemy's camp is trying to close the doors so that the spirit of God can't seep through. Coming out is out and going in is in. God is releasing upon us the power of invasion. Everything you do, you're invading. I need you to see it like that. You are invading. You are invading. You are invading the, the camp of the enemy. You are invading. You are, you are light and you are coming in and you are busting darkness all up. Every, everything about you, everything you do, every conversation you have, watch what you say. Because coming in is in. The spirit of invasion is all on you and all in you. And here's the thing, people. Whenever we get revelation, we can never go back to not having it. And so tonight, God is releasing unto you the weight. When you walk in somewhere, it's as if 2.5 million people are in stink or in sync. That they're stepping in time. Boom. 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 So you can no longer say, I don't know why people treat me like this. I don't know why when I walk in a room, people stare at me. Boom. 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 In the spirit, things are shaking. Boom. Boom. We call Shanda. We call Siddi. Boom. You're coming into your power. Mm. Over you is God's right hand and his left. And so right now in the presence of God, Number one, everything that you've put on the shelf about yourself, about how God made you, about what you know that God has called you to do, but you've been disappointed. It didn't work out. Crap happened. 
You don't have to get rid of that. You don't have to let that go. Come here, Moses, and come here, Joshua. Joshua lived. Mm -hmm. Joshua lived during the time of Moses. The Bible says, not the Bible, commentators say, look at me, about to add some junk to the Bible. Commentators say that Joshua had seen, here's the thing, if Joshua was in that group that came out, he was in slavery. Joshua and Caleb had been enslaved. When they got to this point for Joshua and Caleb, there was no going back. Joshua and Caleb were not born in the wild place. They were born in slavery. They came through the wild place. See yourself, Joshua. I need you to see yourself, Joshua. You've come through slavery. Come on. There were some things that, you, that happened to you. It was out of your control. There was no way for you to protect yourself. There was no way for you to choose another outcome. Slavery, the system of, of, of Egypt. You got out of that and then you came into a wild place. Nothing seemed to fit. Nothing seemed to work. Bad relationship after bad relationship, falling into depression, being left for dead, all sorts of things popping off, seeing people die around you, not fully engaging with what thus saith the Lord, but you believe. Here's the thing about Joshua. The Bible says that when Moses would leave out of the tent of meeting, Joshua stayed behind. So you knew God, you know God, you seen God work. You were of the generation that came out. You were of the generation that your clothes didn't wear out and your shoes didn't grow old. You were in that generation that saw that was fed with manna. You were that generation that was fed with leeks and onions. You were also that generation that was fed with manna. You saw the quail. You saw the people fall dead. You saw all of this. You know God. You know the hand of God. You know the power of God. And now you, Joshua, you're standing at the edge. And God has come to visit you. And he's saying, the season of Moses has transitioned. See, now Moses has died. The season of coming out has transitioned. You get it. You get it. You get the severity. You get the weight of where we are right now as a nation. You get the weight where we are right now as a people, as humanity. You get it. Yeah, this is your turning point. Yes. And so Joshua is arising. And with you and in you are commands. And you're going to bring people in. And by the sound of your voice, people will be charged to invade. By the, the covenant that's over your life, people will come in and the tribes will possess the land finally. God is going to undo what has been done through seasons and generations of slavery and seasons of generations in the wild place. He's talking to you, Joshua. And what he's saying, some of the things that he released last night, that's why I keep referencing referencing last night you will bring people out in droves through these things but it's not pretty words it's so much deeper it's so much deeper than pretty words it's so much deeper than your craft it's so much deeper than a little hobby this is the will of God this is the sovereign will of God this is the perceptive will of God this is the good pleasure It's in your mouth. It's in your belly. It's in your ministry. It's in your business. It's not a blessing. It is a command. I have commanded you to write. I have commanded you to sow. I've commanded you to, to uh, build. I've commanded you to plant. I've commanded you to do this business. I've commanded you in this place. I've commanded you in this land. Now I've blessed you lollipops and ponytails. Did you, says God, 
to go in and drive out. I don't, I, don't, I don't care how long whatever's in the land has been there. I don't care how big they are. I've commanded you to drive them out. I don't, I don't care how scary they are. I've commanded you to be strong. I've commanded you to set your face like flint. I've commanded you to set your jaw and to go in. Is this making sense? It's not a hobby. I, I don't know who that's for. It's not a hobby. It's a command. It's not something that I just like to do on the side. It's a command. And God is saying to set yourself to become stubborn in what he has told you to do. Everything about you, everything in your life now must be fortified. You need to see everything and every person in your life as this fortified thing that is going to take, hallelujah, that's going to take you, that's going to take you and what's in you and what's in your generations to the next place. God is commanding you. It is not just a blessing. He's commanding you to go in and to drive out the inhabitants of the possession that he has given you. No more pretty prayers. No more pity pat. Everything that God has told you to set your hands to, you know that your hands are fortified. What's in your belly is fortified. When you walk in a place, no more are you going to take down. No more are you going to hesitate. No more are you going to fall back and try to hide. When you walk in, it's the sound of 2.5 million people coming into the land. You are an invader. The spirit of invasion is in rising. It is arising. The season of coming out is out. And the season of going in is in. It is time to invade the land. It is time to invade the possession. It is time to set your face and it is time to take courage. And so if you didn't watch the scope from yesterday, go back and watch the scope from yesterday and then go back and pull all of those prophecies and all of those things that God has told you in your prayer time off of the shelf. And I need you to see it now, not as a, a, a blessing anymore. I need you to see it as a command. This is the command of God concerning me. This is the command of God concerning my children. Come on. Is, is some crazy stuff going on in relationships? Hmm? What does the command of God say? Hmm? Now I'm going into that Shekinah covenant. All right, God, you made an oath with yourself. You swore by yourself concerning this thing. You swore by yourself concerning this child. When he was in my loins, my seed, you have a promise over my seed. And I'm enforcing that promise. It ain't a blessing anymore. When your children get the word of the Lord over their lives, you need to enforce it that God is telling you what he has commanded them to do. And it is your job to put them on the path. It is your job to set their feet in that place. It is your job. Come on, Moses. It is your job to make them a Joshua. It is your job to bring them in the tent and then leave them there with God. Because eventually they're going to have to bring people in on their own. It's time that we look at what God has commissioned us to do. And don't, don't you stand in another prayer line if you don't want God to command you to do. Mm -hmm. Don't you stand. Don't you stand and try to get another prophet, prophetic word and lift your hands. If you are not ready to do what God has commanded you to do, this is not the blessing. It is the command of God. Drive out the inhabitants. Drive out the inhabitants. Drive them out. Drive them out. Drive them out, Joshua. You are invading. You are invading. You are invading. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know this is heavy. This is a heavy word. This is a heavy word. Because there's some repentance that needs to go forth. We have become common with prayer. And we have gotten common with the prophetic. 
And I'm not just speaking to us that's on the line. I'm, we are intercessors, so we're talking about everybody. We got so many words, our words got words. And then we open up a notebook and we be like, oh yeah, I forgot God, you said that to me. And God is looking at you saying, you, my word is not supposed to return back unto me void. You are supposed to accomplish. You are supposed to prosper that which I sent you to and you done got comment with me. You done got comment with my voice. You don't even know what I've said anymore. You got recordings on your phone, right? Running up to a prayer line, running to get another word and you have not done the last thing. We need to see it. When God is speaking, it's not because he has nothing else better to do. Huh? When God calls your name, it is a solemn, sovereign moment. When God calls your name, it is a solemn, sovereign moment. And now, yeah, we cool, and we down, and he my best man, and we homies. But when God calls your Mary... What she could not discern, what she could not see as she stood at the dead place. He's standing right in front of her. She says, this is the gardener. Mary, when God calls your name, it is a solemn, sovereign moment. And so in the presence of God, we have to repent where we have taken those, those moments, those sacred moments. And it didn't mean anything. It was just, it was just another thing. It was just another conference. It was just another gathering. It was just somebody prayed for me. They laid hands on me. They spoke something and I forgot what it was. And why, but I was so high that, that the prophet, no, God called your name through the prophets. We got to stop seeing people and we got to start hearing God. I'm going to a place. I'm going to a gathering. I'm going to an assembly to meet with God. So when God calls my name, when I'm standing at the altar, when I'm standing at the sacred place, he is defining me. He is refining the invader. He is refining the warrior. This is a warring moment, not on the defense. You are bringing the noise. You are bringing the war. You are bringing it. And so right now in the presence of God. God, where we have gotten common when you call our name, even, even in prayer, even in the prayer, in prayer time, you, you, God speaks to you. Some of you guys, God speaks and 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 you don't even know what to do with it. So you don't do anything with it. You don't even write it down. And God, it's a sacred moment. It's a solemn moment. God, whenever you open your mouth, I am here. I am present. I am standing at attention. Why? Because I am an invader and you're giving me the tools to drive out the inhabitants. You are giving me the strategy to drive out the inhabitants. You are feeding my courage and my strength that I can keep setting my face like Flint. Come on. They went to battle after battle after battle until they could get rest. It's right there in Joshua chapter one. It's right there. You're going to go in, take the possession, because this is a time. After you do it, you're going to be in rest. But you're going to have to fight your way to rest. You're going to have to fight. The battle is won. But driving out the inhabitants is violent. It's violent. Driving out the inhabit, plundering. Come on. Taking captive. Come on. It's, it's violent. So no longer are you going to look at your blessing like it's something sweet and cute. It is a command. No longer are you going to look at the hobbies and the things that God has told you to do with your hands and say, oh, yes, I do this really well. It's really, really cute. No, it is a command. Sacred. Sacred. Everything about you, everything from the way you move to the way you speak, to the way you pray, to the way you worship, to the way you preach, to the way you speak to people. You are driving out the inhabitants. Come on. You are invading the land, Joshua. Moses is dead. The season of coming out is out. And the season of coming in is in. The season of invasion is in. You're no longer coming out. You're coming in. And you're going to fight your way in. Because you are invading there are some things there. There are some people there. There are some spirits there that have been there and they feel like they have a right to this. They don't know nothing about you. They don't know nothing about this promise. They don't know about what God swore to your grandmother, your grandmother. He swore, but he took his left hand and his right hand and he's put them together and he made an oath over your line. He made an oath to your grandmother. He made an oath to your grandfather. He made an oath about you. They don't know nothing about that. They're going to push back. 
And when they push back, I need you to be strong. Come on, it's time to strengthen your feeble knees, says God. This is not the season as we're getting ready to cross over into the fifth month. This is not the time to draw back. This is not the time to shrink back. This is not the time to look down. This is not the time to round your shoulders. This is the season of the invader. This is the season of invasion, says God. Everything about you, everything you do now, you're going to see it through a different lens and a different light. Everything about you is warfare. Yes, Everything in you is warfare. Everything, everything, everything. When you walk in a place, boom, boom, boom. Because you're so heavy. The weight of his glory is so heavy on you. The weight of his glory is so heavy on you. The weight of the warrior is so heavy on you. The weight, the burden of God come upon your life. And may you never see yourself as a grasshopper. May you never see your life as craziness. Come on, Joshua. You had to be in slavery. You had to be in the wilderness so that you could stand and bring the people in. The season of coming in is in. He needed somebody with the urgency. That's why I believe he chose Joshua. He chose, there, were, there were people there, guys, that were younger than Joshua. By this time, Joshua's coming close to 80. As they're getting ready to cross over, he's, he's older. He's older. So there's a whole generation that's younger, swifter, stronger than him, but they don't have the urgency. They ain't come up the rough side of the mountain that he's come through. And so when he stands and he hears from God, it takes on a whole nother life. And God is calling you to in this place. He's saying, baby, you done been through so much. You understand the urgency of possessing the possession. The urgency, the urgency upon your writing, the urgency upon your business, the urgency upon your marriage. God didn't put you guys together because y'all cute. Come on. God didn't put you guys together because you're cute. God didn't give you your sons and your daughters because y'all make a pretty family and pretty portraits. Mm -mm. <laughs> invading, invading, invading. And over your children, I speak the spirit of invasion, that they are the spirit of God on them. Come on. And that when they go to school, come on, teachers will meet with God. Children will meet with God. Literally things that were going to pop off ain't going to pop off anymore. Come on. Everything in your realm, everything, everything in your realm must support the spirit of invasion. And if it doesn't, I need you to drive it out tonight. The places, remember when we're talking about courage, courage is a seat of the soul. So when God is saying be strong, that's one definition. But now God is speaking into that place in the soul. And he's saying, come on, that place in your soul, I need it to arise. I need it to arise. Because what you're getting ready to do, it's going to change history. I need you to see that about yourself. Baby, when you pray, you change in history. Did you know that? When you pray, you change history. When you pray, you rewrite what's in the history books. It was supposed to go down one way in the history book, but some people began to pray. It changed what was in the history books. Do you understand that? When you pray, you change history. And nobody will, your name will never go down. You were not General Patton, General E. Lee. You no, know, you're General You. Come on. Everything in you is, is, is warrior. Everything in you is warrior. Everything in you is warrior. Everything in, in you is warrior. And so some people got on the scope tonight and they were weary. There was some junk that's been popping off. The first quarter of 2017 has been shenanigans. Straight up and down, shenanigans. It's been one thing after the other, after the other. Say amen if this is you. It's been one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. Why? Because baby, boom, boom, boom. When you crossed over into 2017, the earth began to shake. When you crossed over into 2017, come on, systems begin to shake. Boom, 
boom. And so that's why it's been one thing after the other, after the other, after the other, so that you would not see the weight of glory that's on you. So that you, you would turn your attention away, that you would turn your focus towards the craziness. Boom, boom. When you cross over 2017, when you cross over 2017, the earth began to shake. When you cross over 2017, little earthquakes begin to break out. When you cross over, earthquakes in your generational line begin to break out. When you cross over into 2017, earthquakes in your children begin to break out. When you cross over into 2017, break, uh, earthquakes in your industry begin to break. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, and, and, and the, the, the spirit of the enemy does not want you to see, to understand that this is the time of invasion. So what? There are giants in the land. You're standing at the edge and the, the urgency, you get it. When you pray, I need you to see your prayer life different. I don't care if when you pray, it doesn't sound powerful. Gone is that day. I'm yelling and I, I, I yell, I scream. I'm not even going to lie. I get excited. Like, ah! But I don't believe it's any more anointed than somebody that prays in a whisper. Let me help you. If you get up at five o'clock and all you can do is sit there and yawn and go, because you're for real sleepy in your natural body, let your natural body off the hook. Your spirit man is praying. So you sit in your seat and you change and you rewrite history at 5 a.m. in the morning. Rewrite history at 6 a.m. in the morning. Rewrite history at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yawning, looking crazy. Rewrite history. Boom. 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 I'm releasing this over your prayer life. Boom. Marcus, I'm releasing this over your worship. Boom. Boom. That the song of the Lord. Wait. Wait, wait, you are invading the land. Wait, wait, waiting, waiting the Shekinah glory over your life. And this season, your name shall not return back to God void, but your name and everything concerning your name and the definition that is connected to your name shall prosper and accomplish that which God sent you to. It is time to invade. Suit up. It is time to invade. time to invade your prayer life. And, and for those who are on here who have felt like your prayers have not been getting through, come on. I know. <laughs> I, I know it's crazy. I'm like, I'm on scope and I'm booming and people are going to be like, what is she doing? Boom. I don't care. I don't care. I'm tired of seeing what is going on. Thank you, God, for showing me again. I am an invader. The spirit of Joshua is rising up in me. When I pray, it means something. When I worship, it means something. My voice rewrites history. There is power on the inside of me. God made an oath concerning my life. I ain't finna go down like this. I ain't finna live like this. We are coming out and we're going over. We're not crossing over. We are invading the land. Jesus. See, I told you I yelled a little bit. My bad. My bad. <laughs> yes. Yes, every time you open your mouth, I need you to hear, boom, boom, boom. Every time you walk into something and people don't like you, or people turn their face, or gossip begins, or mess breaks out, boom, boom, boom. It got to be like this, boom. Why? When you see the gossip, all it is, come on, all it is is the wall of Jericho. That's Come on, what caused the wall of Jericho to fall? The Bible says that the wall fell flat. What wall falls flat? A wall fell flat. It didn't break up in pieces. It fell flat. Boom. They circle boom, the wall. Boom. Boom. And then on the last day, they, they added their voices. Come on. The weight of your voice. The weight of your footsteps. The weight that you're carrying in you. And so when everything breaks out, when the shenanigans breaks out, it's okay. It's just the wall. It's just you driving out the inhabitants. And so what, that's, let, hear me when I say this. So you may want to write this down. Because when you come into the knowledge of God, you can never go back. And so tomorrow, starting tomorrow, if, you, it's, it, if it appears that you walked into a setup, if it appears that you, you all of a sudden uncover and discover that there are plots and plans and skits against you, it is only because you have come into the knowledge of boom, boom. No weapon formed against you can prosper, baby. 
No weapon in every tongue that rises up against you is already condemned. This is the uh, 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 heritage of the saints. This is your inheritance. This is your heritage. That every tongue that rises against you, they, the tongues are going to rise. The shenanigans is going to arise. The weapons are going to come. The fiery darts are going to come. It's supposed to. When you walk into a place, atmosphere changer, that which does not belong is immediately going to become uncovered. Yes. We're praying for you, Jan. We're praying for you. Thank you for joining us. And immediately. So don't think it not strange when you walk in and you see craziness start breaking out. It's because now you're walking in the knowledge that you're driving out, that your very presence is driving out the inhabitants. Yes, two interviews, baby. Yes, yes, yes. So, Father, I thank you. We bless you for tonight. We bless you for this revelation, God. We thank we push your people into this revelation. We push your people, God, that even when we get off the scope, that you will take them deeper, that there will be a deep dive, that you will begin to uh, uh, stir up, that the Holy Spirit will begin to uh, recall, call those things, recall those things that we have forgotten, that he will begin to stir up that which needs to be remembered in prayer. I'm not talking about remember as in memory. I'm talking about put back together again remembered. There are some things that were dismantled. There were some, 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 some gifts and some callings that were dismantled. There were some things that God called you and told you to do and you dismantled it because of the season that you came through. And God is saying to you, prophet, now I'm going to put you in the valley and you're getting ready to prophesy to the pieces and the pieces are going to come together and the pieces are going to go boom. And a mighty army. Boom, a boom, a boom. And it's going to serve you. Mm, mm, mm. I hear the Lord. Yes. And so tonight, I pray, God, that the Spirit of God will meet the people of God in their living rooms, in their bathrooms, and in their sleeping, in their kitchens, that the Spirit of the living God would fall upon children, that the Spirit of the living God would fall upon family members that are here and there in the name of the pieces are coming back together again. The pieces are coming back together again. And we are going over. We are possessing the land. We are invading the land. We are invading the land. We are taking it back. That what you swear, God. That what you swear, hallelujah, to our forefathers. That what you swear, God, to our pastors, to the people that are over us. That what you swear, God, to our grandmothers. And that you made an oath with yourself concerning us and concerning our season. Push your people into that, God. We push your people into that, Master, tonight in Jesus' name. I'm praying your fire back. I'm praying your fire back. I'm praying your fire upon fire upon fire. You are a blaze. You are a fresh blaze in the name of Jesus. Everything about you is a fresh blaze because you're seeing yourself. You're seeing yourself as God sees yourself. You're coming into the definition of how God defines you. God, what your people mean to you. I push them into that definition. God, when you release them into the earth, I push them back into that definition. God, when you speak their name, what does their name mean to you? I push them back into that, to that definition in Jesus' name. The purpose that God has over you, so shall it be according to the word of the Lord over you in Jesus' name. I'm going to yell at y'all. My bad. <laughs> Woo, I get excited. Praying over your prayer lives. I'm praying over your your your, your waking lives. I'm praying over you that when you lay down and you go to sleep, that your spirit is going into the deeper places, that your spirit is receiving instruction in Jesus' name. There are no barriers in this season. There are no barriers in this season. There are no barriers in this season. There are no barriers. No bar Stretch wide your tent pegs. There are no barriers in this season, says God, over you and for you in Jesus' name. You're going to see everything about you. Everything that you even say is a hobby. I need you to bring it before God. Everything. And that, the, those degrees that you're not using anymore, that's for somebody. You, you got some degrees and you're not even working in them anymore. God says that that degrees was for not. God's going to use the knowledge. God's going to open some doors that if you didn't have the degree, that door wouldn't open. But you're still not going to, you don't want to work in the degree. But the degree is a key. And so God is saying, bring that degree back to me in my presence. And I'm going to turn, I'm going to make it into a key. And it's going to unlock some doors. Some doors are being unlocked even as we speak right now. And as I declare this over you, there are some doors that are being unlocked because now you understand when I walk through the door it's not a blessing when I walk through the
the door. It's a command. God is calling me to invade the mountain. God is calling me to invade the industry. God is calling me to invade this, this, this place or this nation or this city. Invasion, 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 says God. Whoosh, invasion. Invasion. Invasion on Twitter. Invasion on Instagram. Invasion on WordPress. Invasion on Facebook. Invasion, invasion on LinkedIn. Come on, invasion, 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 invasion. And you will not shrink back. When the shenanigans pops off, you gonna rise up in this season. Why? Because baby, you on the offense. Baby, you the aggressor. I am shaking you intercessor and I am saying, wake up to God's purpose in you. Wake up to God's purpose over you. Wake up to the power that's in you. Wake up and pray. Says God, wake up and declare, wake up and rewrite history, wake up, wake up, wake up, says God. Wake up, soto. Bring your bank accounts, your finances, bring all these things back into the presence of God. Everything about you, God is using for the invasion. Every possession that you have, God is using as a weapon of invasion. Hallelujah. Even your personality. That was uh, driving out the inhabitants in your soul. Driving them out in Jesus' name. No more being melancholy. No more being downtrodden. No more being sad. A dream deferred makes the heart sick. But when it comes, it is a tree of life. I'm declaring the tree of life. I'm declaring a breakthrough. A break out. Oh my God in your personality. Over the broken places of your heart. Piece by piece by piece by piece. Putting it back together again in Jesus' name. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eh, kusan dio kose. Piece by piece, or some of you guys, you got a broken heart. You got a broken heart. People didn't believe in you. People didn't support you. You're really talented. I'm telling you, I'm coming on behalf of the people who dropped you off and left you for dead. I'm saying to your baby, boom, boom, boom. You're so talented. You're so talented. They had to drop you off. They had to leave you. It had to be this way because God is doing something so with you. God is doing something so in you. But this is the season where you are arising. This is the season where you you are going to come back into your skill set and it's going to be good to you and it's going to be good for you. So right now in the presence of God, I need you to loose those people. I need you to loose the bitter roots. I need you to let it go because this is a God thing. You are crossing over. You are coming into. You are invading the land. You are invading the land and you ain't got time to be bound. Boom. Boom. Boom to your soul. Boom to your Boom. Right now in the presence of God, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Drive out the inhabitants. Because where you're going, there's no, there's no room. Yeah. Where you're going, there's no place for that. Where you're going. You are an invader. You're not tired. You're not weary. You're not going to let go. Some of you guys even said today, I hear you said, I can't take anymore. I'm done with this. Why does that win God? Win God. And God is saying to you, oh, invader, it's time for you to drive out the inhabitants. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong. Set your face like flint and your teeth, grit your teeth. Be obstinate when it comes to what God has spoken over your life. Be obstinate. Be stubborn. Be a wall. Whatever God has said is, so shall it be according to his word concerning me. There is no variance. There is no wishy-washiness. There is no turning back. There is, why? Because he made an oath over me. He made an oath with himself over me. He swore by himself over me. He swore by himself over my life. He swore by to himself over me. So I set my face and I sit in the seat of authority. I can not be moved. I can not be moved. And so we release your people now, tonight, 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 today, today. 
welcome, not to your breakout. Welcome to your coming in. 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 Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we release this word over your intercessors. And they are going to pray from the place of the invader. And they are going to dispossess and they are going to plunder. And they're going to take out, take down that which does not belong in the possession. We are here and we are open. Do a work in us that we, God, <laughs> would go in and possess the land. So we're going to be back on tomorrow at 7. Whatever you do, don't lose the presence of God. Don't move. Prayer to complete school this semester in Church of Miami. We agree with you, daughter of the lion. Put your name in. Because um, I can't even guess what your name is. <laughs> yes, we agree. You've already completed school. Come on. There is an oath over you. There is an oath over you. Yeah, there's an oath over you. God swore by himself concerning you. And so you got to put that thing on. Remember, when, when we pray into it, yes, tomorrow at seven, when we pray into the promise of what God has spoken over us and he told us to do a thing, we need to pray in that promise what it means to him. Not what it means to us, not what my degree means to me. What does my degree mean to him? And you pray into that and you pray into God, be it unto me according to your word, be it unto me according to your goodwill and your pleasure, be it unto me, God. And I'm going to fall back. And I'm saying to you, Father, you when you said this, you meant something, right? And so we bless the Father concerning your life. Yes, that if you're in finals right now and maybe you're on the edge with some grades, that the favor of God is going to come upon you. Do your part, do your studying. I believe in studying. But even in your study time, that it will not be arduous. In your study time, you will not feel like, oh, and bite your teeth and grit. You know that there will be a peace, that there will be a calm that will come upon you, that the Holy Spirit is going to stir up on the inside of you what is already there. And when you sit down to, at your test, that the peace of the Lord is going to overtake you. The peace of God is going to be an umpire for your soul in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And even the trips to Miami, prayer scope, whoop, whoop. Uh, but the trips to, um, yeah, it's been hard. It's okay. It's invading. It's fighting. It's war, baby. It, when, how do you know that you're on the right track, that you're doing what God is calling you to do? It's hard. That's the number one sign. It's hard. There's a bunch of pushback. As a bunch of pushback, that pushback says I'm on the right track. <laughs> the pushback means I'm, I'm traveling down the right road. If there is no pushback and you just going free, you better be looking over your shoulder because some ain't right. The pushback. The pushback means I'm invading. I'm invading the land. Come on. That's what it means. But we even believe that God is going to put pockets of people together. Yeah, when God's going to put pockets of people together and you guys are going to ride to Miami. Yo, Miami. It's going down. We believe that God is going to change. He's going to shift the nation. It's not just about Miami. It's just not about, it's not another pretty conference. It's not another pretty gathering. God is doing a thing. This is the hand of God in the nation. People are praying and we are rewriting history with our prayers. We are rewriting history. It's all of us praying. Amen. We are invading the land. Whew, Jesus. Y'all, when we get off, we're going to be back on here at seven. Don't move from the presence of God too quickly. God is speaking to you. God is not gossiping to me about you, right? God's not gossiping to me about you. God is talking to you about you. And you got to make some decisions. You got to decide. You got to decide that you are crossing over. You are invading the land. You're coming into that place. You got to decide that God has spoken some things concerning your name. And you will not return back to God void, but you will accomplish and prosper that which he sent you to. You got to decide and say. You got to decide and say. You got to decide and say. And so I want you to get your little journals out. And I want you to write, write out your decisions before God tonight. Write them out before God tonight. This is a serious thing. God is moving. God is doing a thing in us. And we're about to see Joshua arise.
So listen to God and write down what he says. And I will see you guys on here tomorrow at 7. Amen. Love you guys. I love you too, Dr. B. <laughs> Good night.